Hi there, welcome to the world of work. I'm Harry and I'm joined by Sarah and Charlotte. And today we're going to be talking with Elliot Cooling about starting your career and youth in the world of work. Uh, welcome to the Future of Work series, Elliot. Uh, we're happy to have you on. We're talking about starting your career and uh, we're going to start off with the uh, first question we've been asking, which we're going to be asking everyone, same question we asked Rob. Uh, who are you and what's your why? Cool. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for having me, guys. Uh, it's a pleasure speaking to all of you and all your lovely faces. Um, so who am I? I am Elliot Cooling. I uh, came straight out of sixth form, went into uh, working at a local indoor ski slope, worked as part of their sales team. Um, did that for about two years, uh, saved up enough money so I could go away travelling. Uh, that was very enjoyable. So I did that for about four months, did some volunteering abroad in Borneo. Uh, and then when I came back, I ended up in a startup. Um, we were bringing in foreign products into the UK, selling them to major UK retailers. Um, and subsequently after that, one of the products that we were selling wanted to set up an operations base in the UK. Uh, put myself forward for that. They said yes. Um, managed to migrate from Australia to the UK. So got to travel over there, got to learn everything, moved the office up to Glasgow. And then I was going to go over to the States and work with my uncle. Um, he had an executive search firm uh, in recruitment. But uh, due to COVID, sadly, that fell through. Fell on my feet at the end of last year and applied for Ethos and managed to uh, get a position, which uh, has been wonderful and a brilliant learning experience, especially learning uh, all of the new working from home aspects of work. It's, it's very different, very strange, um, but it's, it's something I think we should all begin to learn as that will be probably a future pathway for a lot of work and a lot of offices. Um, but yeah, my, my why is, uh, is, is really a, a part of why Ethos is so wonderful, is hoping that we can get sustainable work futures for not just young people, but for everyone. Um, there's so many things in today's world where people are getting put into different positions, out of different positions very, very quickly. The turnover is massive. Um, and it would be nice for people to have a little bit more stability and solidity with their work. So I think that's one of the reasons why we'd like to see it all change. Great answer. Well, you've been around a bit by the sounds of it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't go to university, so yeah, yeah I had the chance. All, all that without a degree as well, that's fair enough. <laughs> you don't have all the debt? <laughs> no, yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean that I've got a lot of money, though. <laughs> <laughs> Still live at home with mum. Thanks, mum. <laughs> uh, shout out Elliot's mum. So as someone who is young and only at the beginning of your career, what should the future of work look like to you? Ooh, that's an interesting question. Um, I think... With modern technology being such a prevalent part of our lives and considering how much we use it on a regular basis, I think uh, it's, it's something that work will always be next to a lot of people uh, in, in a sort of weird way. Uh, we never really escape work, or at least if you've, ever, if you've ever been abroad for a holiday and you've got your email machine with you, whether that be a laptop or your phone, you'll always be in conversation with people. So I think the world of work kind of follows you where you go. And it obviously depends on what you do and how you do it. Um, but quite a lot of people now, I think, um, are always connected to their work somewhere or another. Mm. I think looking at myself when I was working in, uh, well, I, was, I used to work up in Glasgow, um, and my time up there, I'd have constant communication with people who'd be, um, down south here in London, um, across in Australia um, and in China as well. We had loads of different people all around the world communicating with one another, utilising the technology that we had. Um, so I think in a way it's, it's one thing that the world of work has began to learn how to use. Mm. Um, and I think it, it does open a lot of possibilities for a lot of people to work together in a global community, which I'd like to see happen more often. Mm. Um, but also you have to have that mindful element of you don't want to get too sucked in, otherwise you're never going to escape it. And you're never going to have that balance, which ethos is one thing that we strive for. Mm. We offer the, the balance with mentoring, with um, talking to various different people. 
hope Charlotte hasn't just Charlotte's bugged out. <laughs> hated me for that answer. But um... no, no, not at all. Uh, she's uh, she's had some connectivity issues uh, in the last episode, and just generally. So um, hopefully she can uh, pop back in, and it'll be right. Oh, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before. Don't worry. Sorry for the blue for real. It'll be fine. Yeah, no, I totally get what you mean. The internet's changed everything. It's completely changed everything. And like the fact that it's also still quite young as well, I think means people have been like over the last twenty or so years, they've been still trying to figure out the ins and outs of it. Mm. And I feel like this uh, job in particular is like really sort of a reminder of, okay, this is actually where it could hopefully be used for good, among other things. And, you know, can actually really open up to the future of the workplace because, you know, we're, we're, we talked about this with Rob last week. We're, uh, we're, you know, we're tired of the old sort of like factory settings and the old nine to five, the commutes and all that. The commute is one of the things that I don't miss from mm. uh, free. So I, I, I kind of miss being on my feet but I don't miss the commute because just the idea of like having to be strapped to a certain place, you know, just being able to actually be working mobile, I think makes all the difference. Definitely. You know? definitely. Mm-hmm. I think um, further to add to that point is I've, I've got election duties coming up in, in mm-hmm. the week. And I basically just said to uh, Annabelle at the beginning of the week, I just said, I've got these going on on these days. If I just whack it in the calendar, everyone can see it. Everyone knows what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely fine. I can work later on one day and sort of, earlier on another day it doesn't it's not restrictive it is mm. quite fluid and you can you can work better that way i think yeah. and because yeah. you're working off something that you're passionate about that you you know want to do you know you are you're not going to be taking the mech either are you? you're going to be like wanting to you know put in the hours that you've a lot to not just uh, sort of thing you know no one's <laughs> taking rob or annabelle for a ride here i don't think i haven't noticed so far anyway <laughs> We all feel like we're getting away with something, but we're still, you know, turning up to work, aren't we? Like, That's the weird thing. You mentioned that. You, you say, oh, you feel like you're, you're getting away with something. But having that freedom is something that a lot of workplaces just can't offer. Mm. Um, it, it's, it's physically difficult for them to be able to do that. And um, I remember, just as a different little story, um, when I was working for Space Talk, who I was bringing the operations over to the UK, we had a very small team um, for custom support and service. Um, we actually closed our office down over the Christmas period and we all worked from home um, over uh, Christmas Eve and Boxing Day. Um, we all worked from home and we all took shifts, answering calls and taking emails. Um, and, and we all thought, oh, why, don't we, why don't we just do that all year round? Um, it would just be brilliant because yeah. you'd just be able to get on with it. But of course, you then have the other caveat of, training and um so many other different things that you need to sort out as a business but Mm. this is why ethos has i think cracked the code almost of Mm. having a slightly different way of working just to enable people to sort of learn for themselves think on their feet be independent yeah well there's a lot of talk of like uh, a lot of people in the government say people want to go back to work people are tired of working from home but I think that's just because a lot of businesses haven't really figured out the obstacles or the caveats of like how you get around training and those other sort of difficult things like that in a work from home environment. Whereas Ethos, you know, been doing it for the last twenty years or so, it's uh, you know it's something that luckily we've cracked in advance. Yeah, I just think it's so much. Just so, just to add to that as well, like uh, allowing people to have that kind of like flexibility and you know work from home and work when it suits them as well. I just feel like it makes people so much more motivated and happier like when they are working because it allows you to like have a life outside of work and like your employer doesn't just see you as like you know just a little like cog of you know productivity and like sees you as a whole person and like people have complicated lives you know we all have things that we want to do and things that we have to do that aren't just being at work and like making money and you know doing that so I just think it's a way more productive and like more like productive way more productive way of working and a way of working that's just better for people's health as well Mm. i suppose like following on from that it's even more important for young people who don't necessarily have as many commitments like i don't have a house i don't have (laughs) a partner that depends on me i definitely don't have any like small children that i need to look after like and having that flexibility, especially as a young person, I think can be so invaluable just to be like, cool, like currently you're living in your mum's house, but 
that doesn't stop you from moving elsewhere at another point and it wouldn't have to disrupt the job that you're doing which I think is so important that you can have a choice of where you live versus where mm. to find a job mm. yeah I think uh, as soon as all of this lockdown shenanigans is completely all over I'm going to take a couple of weeks and spend it down on the south coast with my grandma she deserves oh. my time oh, so, so you're definitely going to do that the actual the south coast uh, she's not actually too far away from um, Arundel, which was mentioned this morning. Uh, she's far. She's uh, sorry. She's far. She's in Worthing, which is okay. uh, near a little town called Rustington. Yeah, I know Worthing. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah, from really? Brighton originally, so um, oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So it's uh, uh, so there is, it's it's always been one of those towns. It's a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a rivalry between us two, but uh, <laughs> it's all it's all it's all out of love, really. It's got a lovely pier, lovely beach. Moving on, we've already talked a little bit about your uh, previous experience and the whole rainbow that it is. Um, <laughs> would you like to talk about your previous work experience and the problem of youth versus experience in uh, the modern work environment? Mm, okay. So we talked yeah. about this a little bit in the Young Leaders uh, What They Can Do For You video, but uh, we didn't actually have you on that one except for just giving the musical jingles. <laughs> we really appreciate, by the way. Thanks, no worries. <laughs> Welcome, anytime. Um, so... I'd say just from where I've worked previously, um, the sales team that I worked in at the Snow Centre was a very young team that was just constantly churned over because it was cheap, because they were below minimum wage. Um, well, it wasn't like below minimum wage. It was the minimum wage for 18 to, um, I think it's 20-year-olds or 21-year-olds. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't paying that upper echelon of, of finance. And they would only keep on people um, if they actually felt, felt that they were... Sort of better with their sales or whether they would potentially move up and be promoted to a team leader or something like that. Um, so it was quite brutal to watch young people coming in, having their first job and then quite quickly be sort of traded out the door um, if they weren't going to sort of cut the mustard basically. And mm. of course some people, it's, 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 especially young people, it's their first job so they might not take it quite as seriously. Um, but I think it was it was one of those things where you could really see a disparity between slightly older colleagues and slightly younger colleagues. Mm. Um, I thought it was a brilliant place to work for myself because I learned so much so quickly. Um, but it definitely had a preference to its uh, founding older members who were part of that team. Moving on from that, uh, I worked with a range of people um, in my Australian job, working with um, Space Talk, what they're called. Uh, their team was fantastic and they had a, a host of experienced people who would sort of direct and sort of point things in the right direction and then they mm. would actually hand it over to the young people to, to learn and to sort of gather that experience. And I thought that was really, really well done. On the whole, I thought the, the business model was good. I thought the bringing in of, of young people and trusting in them was something that's very similar to what's done with Ethos. Um, mm. And, and this is this is definitely a one work environment where the emphasis is put on young people and it gives them the freedom and independence to learn, to develop um, and to hone skills that they didn't necessarily realise that they might have had. Mm. So I, th I think with the development of the working world that we're going through, I think more trust in confident young people and competent young people should definitely be a forefront of of thinking especially when employing people definitely yeah I completely agree I feel like in my previous work experience as well like right before ethos was doing a sales job and it was exactly that kind of atmosphere where the turnover rate was just so fast and the pressure that they put on you was just so intense and I understand that to an extent in a sales environment like that's kind of how it operates it's kind of that is kind of that style of management it's very like targets driven and that really suits some people and it tends to suit people who are good at that kind of sales job. But at the same time, it's just like, it's quite brutal and it fosters quite a toxic atmosphere if you're not doing well, like really fast, because um, it's just so, so high pressure. And I think the trust, what you were saying about trust as well, like I experienced in that job a lot of kind of being, um, I don't want to say watched, but <laughs> kind of being watched and like, you know, they're seeing when you're on the phone, seeing how many calls you're making and stuff. And it, it fosters like a lack of trust and like they don't think you're going to work if they're not watching you, um, mm -hmm. which makes people not work, I think. <laughs> like, it's just like, well, 
well, other than, you know, if you don't trust me, then where where can you go with that relationship? It's mm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, trust is such a huge part of it, I think. Uh, it's one of the main reasons why I left a previous job. I'm not going to say which one, but um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there was a, I'll just say there was a major breakdown between in the relationship between management and uh, regular staff and uh, how uh, much independence was given, was, uh, was doled out. And especially because the regular staff was, you know, mostly made up of students as well, just people working, you know, part time between their uh, uni degrees. You know, you want to foster an environment of, like I say, trust and care and, you know, and I guess sort of uh, the only word I can think of right now is moderation, but I guess sort of balance is what I mean. You know, uh, keeping, your, you know, work and life in line with each other and, you know, not sort of tipping one way or another. Yeah. Mm. I, th- I was just about to say it's it, the disconnect between management and regular staff or sort of the lower level staff. There's a, there's a certain... Um, sort of like thought process that might go through someone's head as soon as they've got a different position. And I think some people are really affected by that and some people actually lead their team and sort of are part and connected of their team. So when I, the the way I looked at it when I became sort of like part of operations and bringing over things from Australia to the UK and building that team was from my perspective I was going, I've never actually led before. I've never done anything like this before. So you're helping this you're helping me with this as much as I'm helping you. We've this is really is teamwork and that's something that Ethos is great with. Um, mm. and I think there's no real disconnect or a hierarchy. And I think that it, it makes for better working. Of course, you need leaders and you need people who have the information, mm. but you can't ever downplay or disregard anyone who you might perceive as below you mm. just because they're in a slightly different position. I think it's, uh, yeah. it's collaboration yeah. over anything else. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've definitely seen that at work. Like I mean, it's only when in the hospitality industry, but I had a job where I was the manager and then I went after I was traveling for a bit, got a new job where I wasn't the manager, which is fine because it was just sort of a part-time job, but it was just really interesting how the managers would talk to me and I'm like, I know what it's like to be in your position. You really mm-hmm. don't need to talk down to me. Like, I'm perfectly qualified for this job. Treat me like another human. You're not that much better than me. Which is such yeah. a weird thing that you should actually question that for people sometimes. But yeah, I think they can have a bit of power to the head. Which is why I so like the peer-to-peer mentality that Ethos has. That's what that mm. is called. Yeah. Well, this is me, uh, with my previous uh work in film that you know that's an industry that's not sort of that's not short of many egos you get a lot of people who you know want to sort of push people around on that but ultimately like the best sets and the best work environments ultimately that you can be in are the most collaborative ones because ultimately you have got a hierarchy and they you know got the producers the directors the the talent the crew and all that but like ultimately it's best when everyone's working together on the same thing and, and it's all sort of in sync and ultimately someone has the final say over what you know, it's going to happen in this shot or another, but like it will ultimately, it'll be still be the result of many people coming together and saying like, okay, how can I help with this? Do you think this will work for it? How's this, you know, going to happen? And, you know, and you know, the best directors, are the best leaders and managers are the ones who were willing to, you know, have opinions and, you know, put their foot down when needed, but will still work closely with everyone and treat them with respect. Ultimately. Yeah. I mean, I feel like everybody wants to work. I put it in and folks comments because what I mean is everybody wants to do something you know you don't often find people that just don't want to do anything <laughs> like mm. so I think if you just treat people with you know bearing that in mind and like also bearing in mind that you know you're always in all every walk of life like not just work you'll always get back from people what you give them so if you're giving them like disrespect and lack of trust and all that kind of stuff like that's the exact attitude that you're going to get back from them um i know there's like a lot of debate around that kind of thing and theory x theory why like management styles in the business you know academic world but I'm definitely a strong believer in the, you know the, the method that i just explained and judging by you know all of our work experiences and pretty much that's this those are the same stories that all the other young leaders have um it seems like the way that ethos does it is just uh, much more it's just better for everybody it's better for the business and it's better for us Mm. yeah completely 
So yeah, the next question we, we were going to be talking about, uh, you know, the value of being individual over the corporate stuff. Uh, but I feel like we've re- we've really just sort of gone into that now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, the question started with, uh, let's talk about creativity jingles. You did uh, <laughs> help us out with some earlier as we brought it up, and uh, like I said, still very grateful. We used a couple of them on the first episode of this series as well. Which uh, once again, thank you. Glad that they've been able to go to use. Thank you for using them. I don't know worries. So I mean, like. Um, I guess what I want to get at is sort of like, how are you, as a young person at the start of your career, uh, fitting around this uh, obvious creative musical passion of yours? Is this something that you want to also pursue further as well and like make a career out of it in its own way? Or is it just a hobby? Or um, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's you want to turn your, your hobby into... You sort of, if you, it's your hobby, it's your passion, and you want to turn it into something that could potentially make money for you one day. So... I've got um, my uncle who lives out in Portugal, but he works for a music distribution firm. Um, I've got various different friends and family who have been in or around the music industry at some stage. Um, So it's basically just keeping in contact with them and whenever the opportunities arise, taking them. Um, The difficulty with COVID is I wasn't able to go out and play any live music. So Mm. no open mic nights, anything like that. You know, the, the practice bit of performing, which really is the fun bit, um, that was being missed out on over COVID. Uh, now that we're beginning to open up slightly, you can sort of see things changing ever so slightly. It's still not going to be back to the way it was, um, but that's something that I would like to go and do when the time arises. In the sort of difference between working um, with Ethos and doing the creative stuff, um, it's actually, I, I've never felt sort of like pigeonholed into one specific position. Um, only to use certain skills that you can only use in that one job. Uh, so there's a whole raft of different things that I've been doing with Ethos, and that, in turn, I think has probably helped my creativity because um, sometimes I'll finish my day at work. I won't actually move because, obviously, as you can tell, I've got all my music stuff around me. I'll just go plug it all in, off I go, and I can just keep keep going. And, you know, it's, it's nice to be in a little workspace um, where I feel like I can be creative mm. and also do work. So the two go hand in hand. What would you say is the value of being creative at work? At work. Okay. <laughs> so this is quite an interesting thing is because on the application, I thought, okay, what's, what is anyone actually going to be? It's either brave enough or dumb enough to put music on as their application, okay? So I thought, okay, well, it's something really different. It's something that's creative, it's outside the box. It might grab their attention. It's probably worth doing rather than not doing it. And it obviously paid off. Um, Putting that on and showing everyone that this is something that I have got a creative flair for, um, any part where someone goes, oh, we might need to use a jingle or any other piece of music for anything, I'll be a guy and that would be very very beneficial not only to you guys but also to myself I think we all have our own little creative quirks and I think mm. when you can use them or if you know someone who can help you out so for example if I wanted a music video filmed <laughs> Harry you're my guy <laughs> got you back <laughs> and there you go you, you can create these little bonds and friendships through your creative passions and that can be used at work you can always use different things mm. to help so yeah. I, I think Ethos really looks out for that, that sort of that initiative. I think because uh, uh, it's sort of what helps me in mind because in my video application, I sort of got suited up next to a fireplace. I, you know, tried to use multiple camera angles to sort of say like, here, I'm a video man. And um, but I think that sort of like they look for that kind of that creativity and that sort of like, I guess, like that confidence I was about to say lack of shame, but that confidence to be able to also <laughs> put yourself out there and just sort of say like, hey, there's something that I can do that I'm passionate about, that I enjoy doing, you know, and if there's a way for us to, you know, work together with it, then that'd be great. And, you know, I think, because uh, I think I, I remember in my interview, they uh, told me about it turning up in uh, the work group chat. So I wound up scrolling up and I found mine and your video right next to each other. And I was sort of like, ooh, Ooh, who's who's this guy? So I'm going to have animal music later. That's great. <laughs> no, it's so good to not be pigeonholed into like a specific role and to have that option to be creative. Like I found, I'm like doing some like more illustrations and like I'm not trained. This is just something I've always just loved and had a passion for. And the fact that you can be like, oh, actually, I'll help with that is such a nice thing to do. Mm. I know Harry, you're still stuck in film. But, you know. Again, it's the, it's the making your passion 
yeah. your work environment. So yeah. you, you're lucky in that respect to, to be able to do that. And even if I'm only doing sort of one bit of music a, a month, that's still better than no bits of music at any time. So yeah, and also it's still it's work that you can still fit around other projects as well because it is so flexible as well. Like I imagine, I imagine like if you've if you've ever got to worry about sort of like oh I've got to whenever things open back up again. If you think like oh I've got a gig on a Thursday night, but I've got to work Friday morning. It's all like, oh, easy. I can just you know push back Friday, deal with the hangover, just tough it out, and then you know <laughs> <laughs> then uh, you know uh, go start work at uh, you know five o'clock on Friday, go through till two a.m. Boom, sorted. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, over the weekend. The, the only thing I disagree with there is I can't play the guitar after I've had a drink. Good. I can only play a guitar after I've had a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can play a guitar after I've had a drink. I think that's the uh, mentality. That's what you want. <laughs> I used to, I used to very much be one of those guys who, you know, whips out the axe around a campfire to strum out not Wonderwall but close to it. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I, uh, I'm not that guy anymore, probably, thank God. <laughs> I'm very glad. So when are we going camping, guys? This sounds like a... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like an AC thoughts about accommodation. So, Elliot, in your opinion, what value does youth bring to a workforce generally? This is a very good question. And something that I think, as a host of young people here, um, I think we can all agree that we offer a very different way of thinking. Um, because we're so fresh into new working industries, because we're so fresh into working from getting out of maybe a degree or doing various other bits of work where we may have limited experience, but we could have big vision or large amounts of enthusiasm. I think young people definitely, I think we have a lot more optimism. We have a lot more dynamism um, and also from looking into previous workspaces, um, this would be places where I've seen people where they have been working there for so many years. Um, it, it almost seems like quite a lot of people can lose a lot of their edge and just get very, very comfortable at sort of traveling along at the bare minimum. Um, and I think young people are just not, I, I don't know, it, it obviously depends on the person, but I feel like young people are much better at really getting stuck in giving different opinions, being a bit more bold and a bit more excited by sort of potential uh, offerings that life can give us. It may be that we're slightly naive and it may be that we might still need to learn things, but I think it's something that's really beneficial for a team. Yeah, mm. I agree. I mean, I feel like we've heard from, you know, all the people who are already uh, partners at Ethos before Young Leaders We've heard from all of them, you know, how great and like refreshing and energizing it is to have the 30 young leaders around that, um, you know, have been brought onto Ethos so far. But I think it's just like to do with diversity in general. Like it's just good to have people from all different walks of life, all different ages, like all different backgrounds. Because, I mean, as soon as you have like a homogenous kind of workforce, that's just results in, it's like, you know, one brain, like wow, how much... The debate can you have with one brain? Not not that much, you know. It's just diversity, in my opinion. Yeah, massive. I think it's huge, and I think not only have we got a host of young people, but we have got a host of young people from all over the UK. It's it's not like we're all in one place. We all didn't go to school with each other. We're not all stuck in the same town. There's so much that we can all learn from each other. Being part of this massive team. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's great. And coming from so many different disciplines as well, like obviously you, you you didn't even go to university and you've done quite a lot, which is amazing. I've got like an arts history background. Charlotte has a business philosophy background and Harry does obviously film. But <laughs> it's so nice, like the fact that there is such a variety of people and backgrounds and what they are passionate about it really does sort of bring everything together yeah it just allows for a really collaborative environment as well like you know we wouldn't have been able to have done this you know youtube series without like all of us and all our different backgrounds and all our different interests and stuff and then that's the same you know that can be applied to most of the pieces of work that we produce in young leaders like it's not a one-man band so you need you need variety um and it's fun like it's great getting to know people that have got different are about different things, you know. It's it's exciting. 
Yeah, yeah, that, that's the thing. If there's one thing I want to communicate through this uh, YouTube series, it is that we are genuinely meaning what we're saying. This isn't a pyramid scheme. This is not a scam. <laughs> <laughs> a better future is possible. It's you know. Thanks for the preface there, Harry. I was getting really confused. I needed to make sure. <laughs> Oh, no, it's great it is great and I, I think learning pardon me learning with everyone else feeling like we're in a fairly similar boat we're all really young um, we're all learning together we're all going through this sort of similar process together um, I feel like there's no barriers between chatting to people or um, getting in contact with even the founder even um, the founder Rob like there's no major barrier between us and him we can go to him if we have a conversation or any questions. Um, any sort of part of this business is accessible to any young person. Um, and I think that working collaboratively, learning together, is just so beneficial for everyone involved. Yeah, mm. completely agree. Yeah, totally. Um, are there any other questions from either Sarah or Charlotte that you feel like? I don't think so. I feel like we've covered quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no it's questions by. anyway, so... <laughs> Yeah. One second. I'll, I'll see if there's someone else who might be able to help. One sec. <laughs> oh, oh, we're going, yeah. off, going off script. What's going on? <laughs> we're, putting, we're putting our bets down. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've got the spaniel. Oh. oh. oh see, I was this like, is the true benefits <laughs> of working from home. <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh she's so happy to be at the desk. <laughs> Her name? Uh, she's called Luna. She's she doesn't look it, but she's about seven years old, Aww. and she's uh, she's my little angel. <laughs> and Luna, what do you think of the future of work? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't work. She likes to lounge at home and go for long. <laughs> Life of absolute leisure. It's, it's Luna's world. We're all just living in it. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is in this house. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie, for coming on. You've been a wonderful interviewee, and uh, I've, I've, we hope you've had fun as well. No, I have. I have. It's uh, obviously always a pleasure talking to you guys. Uh, thank you for having me, um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and have a wonderful week. Yeah, thank you, you too. Thank you very much. And now I know that we can use you for even more jingles without feeling bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, you can put me with that stick. Yeah. <laughs>